So good evening, everybody. I hope we have gentlemen in the room. I only see mostly women, but uh, all the men are also important and encouraged. So I'm just going to share my slide. So today I'm talking about is breakfast sabotaging your day? Just like you said, uh, Karen, breakfast is the most important meal, but is that really true? So much has been done in science, so many discoveries, because our bodies are created in a way that the human being cannot understand it. So we keep having um, research saying this and then new research saying that. So let's find out. So this is this uh, this session is um, is offered to you through the courtesy of Sahara Nutrition. So we know common expressions about breakfast. You know there are two sets of people. There are those who don't eat breakfast. I have a problem with breakfast. I cannot eat breakfast. I feel nauseated. I don't have time for breakfast. And I don't care about breakfast. And then we have the, the other lot who says, I cannot do without breakfast. It's do or die. I eat my largest meal in the morning. So we have two camps. So who's, uh, you know, we have those who don't care and don't eat, and we have those who eat breakfast. So is anyone better? So let's see what's, what science has told, told us. Is it so important to have breakfast? We have two. There's two. Um, it's either a yes or a no. Because science has shown us differently. So yes, breakfast is one of the, is the most important meal because you need to break the fast. You've been fasting for so many hours. And so when you wake up in the morning, you need breakfast. Also, when you wake up, when you, because you've been fasting, we know that your brain uses glucose for energy, like ready glucose for energy, not stored glucose. <coughs> Excuse me. So when you wake up in the morning, your brain doesn't have any glucose. So you have to eat so that the brain has some glucose to utilize. And so what happens is if you don't eat breakfast, your brain ends up using, <coughs> oh God, I'm sorry about that. Yeah. Could you just excuse me? I'm sorry. I have to get water. Sorry about that. Very sorry. Um, Araba, can you say something in relation to this? Sorry. <laughs> yes. So as Alice was saying, there's a lot of noise in my background. Kindly um, bear with me. My children are here. Yes. So um, um, th there's been a number of studies that have been conducted that have um, shown that um, children especially must have their breakfast before they go to school. Um, studies have shown that um, children, Alice, if you're back, please take over. My kids are disturbing in the background. <laughs> Sorry, I'm back, but uh, I hope the voice will be okay. So like Hebo was saying, studies have shown that children who do not take breakfast perform poorly. In fact, they perform less than 5%. And these studies have been shown around the world. So, and it's, goes, it's, it's related to the brain energy. You need glucose, ready glucose. So when you eat food, this food becomes sugar and your brain uses the glucose for energy. So when the child wakes up early in the morning, they go to school without eating breakfast. There is not sufficient energy. So their concentration level is very low. Maybe at snack time, you have packed something sweet. So yes, they will take something sweet, sugar. They will be hyperactive for like a few minutes and then the sugar is gone. And then lunchtime comes and you give them a meal. Because they're hungry, they'll eat. And what's likely to happen is they're going to sleep. So what happens in the evening, your child comes home. The whole morning, the concentration has been zero. So you sometimes people even move children from one school to the other because they're not doing well. But the problem is actually that they're not having breakfast. And also studies with adults have shown that adults who don't eat breakfast are more likely to binge. They're more likely to be overweight because you, you will crave, you'll crave sugar, you'll crave energy. And so you end up taking any snacks that are available to you. And then also if you do, people who don't take breakfast are likely to have a headache at the end of the day. If you have migraine and you don't take breakfast, you're likely to actually, uh, you're likely to have migraine most days of the week. So it's very important to take breakfast. 
And this is what many studies have shown. So if you take breakfast, well done. But then we have new science that is showing that breakfast is actually not that important. The fasting science has put this wrong because if you read about fasting, uh, intermittent fasting, most people know it as that, a lot of, um, uh, there's this gentleman who won the Nobel Peace Prize in 2016, sorry, I can't remember his name. He discovered this auto, um, autophagy. Autophagy is a process where the body actually, when you stay so many hours without uh, eating, the body eliminates dead cells and eliminates toxic material and even you know cancer. And studies have shown that intermittent fasting has been used to treat cancer and actually has also been used to, to, uh, to reverse diabetes. I'm working in a diabetes reversal program. I'm working together with a doctor from the UK and a doctor here in Kenya. And um, the patients, a lot of patients who go on to intermittent fasting are more likely to reverse their diabetes because you're not eating as much. So it means that if you're not eating breakfast, it's not that bad, but are you, you're either eating breakfast or you're doing intermittent fasting. If you're doing anything in between there, we don't know. But yes, it is important to take breakfast, but some other studies have shown that it's not that important. Because if I have somebody who doesn't take breakfast and they're diabetic, I don't have to force them to take breakfast. I will work with them and I will just make sure they eat so many hours a day and they fast so many hours a day. So I don't force people to eat breakfast anymore after all this new science. So what's the solution? So what do you need to do? What do you need to eat? So we have, um, for you to eat breakfast, it also depends on your metabolic rate and of course your behavior. Some people, they need to eat something in order to have a clarity to miss their day. They cannot go without breakfast, like you said earlier. Others, they don't start to get hungry until noon. So they don't eat. So who are you? Are you the one who doesn't, doesn't take breakfast? You need until noon, or are you the one who has to eat breakfast? So it really depends on your metabolic rate and your behavior. Also, do you engage in a lot of sports and physical activity? If you engage in a lot of physical activity, you're more likely to need a good, a good, a good breakfast in the morning because your metabolic rate is a lot higher. And when you fasted, you wake up very hungry and you need something. But if your body starts slowly, you sit at the desk and you don't do any exercise, then yes, maybe you might not even, the breakfast might not be that important for you. So breakfast is also important for people who are on medication because some drugs you have to take on a full stomach. And then our children for growth and development, they need to meet their needs. They need to meet their daily needs. And for a child to be able to do without breakfast, it means they have to be trained not to take breakfast, but we don't have to take children through that. They just must eat breakfast. So they're getting all their nutrients and they're getting a full, um, uh, they're getting energy. Also, depending on your workload, you know, the people who work in construction or if your workload is a lot, you know, you have to use your hands, use your major muscles to work, then you probably maybe need breakfast because then your metabolic rate is as high as the other person who exercises a lot. So what should you eat anyway? Um, food, I think that food ties us to our community and our traditions, and it's the thing that makes us feel good and connected. So we have traditions about food. When it comes to eating, I remember sometimes I recommend to my clients, why don't you eat um, your protein in the morning and avoid it at night? And then because they have grown up eating tea and bread for breakfast, if you tell them to eat meat and, and rice and vegetables for breakfast, they think you're crazy because that is the tradition, that is a tradition. But however, you can eat anything for breakfast. When it comes to protein, most people don't believe that they can, the only protein they can eat for breakfast is eggs, but that's not true. Meat is protein, chicken is protein, fish is protein. So you can, beans is protein, you can eat anything for breakfast. It's only a state of mind and it's our traditions. But if you want to improve your breakfast, improve your health, then you can move things around. So even though traditions, these are some recommendations. You can have smoothie for breakfast and your smoothie, you can, make it, you can make it from green vegetables. You can add some nuts, you can add seeds, you can have avocado, you can have coconut or other healthy fats. You can have bananas, berries or other fruits that make it tasty, anything, anything that's available to you. And you can always make your smoothie with milk or without milk. You can just add water to it and then 
blend everything and drink it. And please note that this is plant. The other thing is uh, you can soak, you know, it's good to eat raw oats rather than cook it. You can soak your oats and then add fresh fruit. You can add um, dried fruit. You can add also nuts and seeds. And you can also add, you know, some honey or some maple syrup. So the choice is yours. What do you normally eat for breakfast? Then we have the classic breakfast, and these are for people who like bread and bagels. So you can take, you can always have um, your bag, whenever you have your bread or you have your bagel, have it with some vegetables, have it with some um, uh, protein, have it with avocado. You can ha have nuts with it. So, and this is healthy. Remember, you've not seen anything here, sausages, bacon, butter, no. This is, we're talking about healthy breakfast because we want all of you guys to be healthy. Then you can also just eat the good old meal. Just wake up and eat your leftover from dinner. You can eat your vegetables, you can eat your rice, like you can see here. This is maybe some chicken curry, you have rice, you have um, some salad and you have beetroot. This is uh, maybe chicken salad as well, some pieces of chicken, some salad, some tomatoes. And this is some rice, some vegetables, and also pieces of chicken. And um, this is um, this is uh, maybe a West African meal where you you mix uh, rice with meat, and then you can have it with some vegetables. This is a salad just made made from cheese, olives, tomatoes, and uh, lettuce. And this is also a West African meal where this is. Um, this is pounded yam, and then you have sauce, meat sauce. And these are some pictures that some friends sent, you know, so you can have, this is bread and avocado. This is very good because when you have something like a fat avocado, it holds you, you, you know, you're eating, you have energy longer because the problem of just eating a piece of bread and going, that piece of bread will be done, will be gone, utilized in 30 minutes. And that means then you don't have glucose and then you're staying long hours without food and staying long hours without food, you get things like acidity, you get constipation, you get headaches, you get fatigued. So if you add avocado, that avocado is a fat and it's, it provides, it helps to sustain your energy longer. And of course, also when you add a protein like egg to your, uh, to your bun, that's also helpful. But because I'm a dietitian, I always want to see more. I want to see some vegetables at least. And this uh, lady here had some avocado and carrots and, um, and cucumber. This might look very little, but as long as you have some kind of fat, avocado, you have some nuts in your breakfast and you have some coconut in your breakfast, that is going to it's going to last you a lot longer so the person who eats this and the one who eats just a slice of bread like if you compare these two this person's food is last is more likely to last her longer because of the fat that um is in the diet so adding things like avocado and salad is very good and then this is uh, maybe some porridge and nuts nuts are also very very filling and so you don't always have to eat you know, the sausages, the bacons for you to get full. Those are really junk food. Occasionally you can have them in your diet, but it's not something I can recommend that you have in your meal every day. So you can have some porridge, you can have some yogurt with nuts. That is very filling and it can last you like four to six hours. And the, good thing, the reason why we should always aim to eat breakfast is because also when you eat breakfast, you don't crave. When you eat breakfast, you can avoid snacking. So people who eat breakfast are more likely to maintain a healthier weight than people who skip breakfast. And here is a meal. Here is some, um, um, you call it pap or stiff maize meal or stiff corn meal with some fish and some vegetable curry. There is nothing wrong with eating this for breakfast. This is a healthy meal. Eat it for breakfast. And then here we have carrots, we have some naan, and we have some egg. Not a bad choice of breakfast. So what it really means is that you can eat anything for breakfast. The choice is yours. So don't limit yourselves. Let it not just be bread, 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 or cereal, cereal, cereal. In fact, a real, um, you know, a real African and a real Caribbean, they, they, they never used to have, they don't have those cereals in their traditional diet. 
So it's not, it's not something you, you eat, it's not something that's available to you traditionally. So eat your traditional food. Our traditional meals are healthy as long as we, might, we, we try to control the amount of fat that goes into, into, the, into your food. So you've seen various choices of your breakfast. Let's just quickly go again. You can have a smoothie, you can have some oats and seeds, and you can add fruits in your oats. You can have the good, you know, a bagel or some a bread or a bun with avocado, with salad, with some fish. You can have salads. You can have a meal that has your protein, your chicken, your rice and your vegetables. You can have salad for breakfast. You can have some rice. You can have your traditional meal for breakfast, but always try to have vegetables. You can have your bread and avocado and you can just have a salad, you know, you can just have a vegetable salad. And as long as you add some nuts or avocado, it actually lasts you very long. And do not be ashamed to eat your meal for, in fact, if you eat this meal for breakfast, the next time you'll be looking for a meal is three o'clock in the afternoon because you will not be hungry. And so you're not snacking, you have sufficient energy. You're, and when you're not hungry, you're stable emotionally, you work better with the team and life goes on. So, remind us, one, your health is your wealth. So if your breakfast is important, make some healthy choices, improve your breakfast. Please note that most of these um, recommendations that we've made, they are not, we've not recommended any junk food, we've not recommended any sausages, we've not recommended any bacon, we've not recommended all those, um, all those processed meats. Just eat your food as natural as possible because your health, is your wealth. It starts with your breakfast. Start a day in health. That means start your day eating something healthy, something that's going to be something that's nutritious, that's going to supply nutrients to your body, and something that is going to provide you energy for longer. Because when you start the day, you need more energy. As you close the day, you need less. And last but not least, when you feed yourself what your body needs, when it needs it, that's love. So give your body some TLC and sit down and enjoy a good breakfast. Thank you very much. I will take questions and comments. Thank you very much, um, Alice. As always, that's a really informative um, uh, session. And, you know, and I mean, there's a couple of questions that have been placed in the chat box, which I'll just quickly ask you. So once mm -hmm. somebody asked the question, um, can the, your breakfast ever too, can your breakfast ever be too heavy if you eat your leftovers? Um, because rice is filling. Is mm -hmm. it yes, it can be so heavy. It can be heavy if you put a lot of food on your plate. So just remember, it's about portion size. And yes, you can actually eat a huge meal for breakfast and you will feel sleepy and you will not be able to work. So just like we said last time, it's about your portion sizes. Half your plate should always be vegetables, a quarter starch, and a quarter protein. So just, you can have your rice, but how much? You can have your meat, but how much? You can have your vegetables, but how much? Yes, thank, thank you. you very much. Now, no. I made a comment. I remember um, when I went to Jamaica for the very first time, and I was given yam and green bananas, and I thought, there's no way I'm good, you know, would I ever be able to eat this for breakfast? Yeah. A group of friends, and I had um, the yam and the green bananas, and it was um, some, uh, it was corned beef, was what actually was what served. Anyway, when we were out for the day, at lunchtime, everybody else was looking for snacks. I didn't mm -hmm. need a snack. <laughs> My breakfast lasted me for the whole the whole day. So I think yeah. the comment there, it was strange to me to eat that food, but I do remember mm -hmm. and laughing at my friends thinking, you were all laughing at me because I was eating this breakfast, but it mm -hmm. served me well for the day. Mm -hmm. So you know, that, that, that reminder that you made there about eating the healthy, you know, our own traditional foods, um, mm -hmm. you know, because that's what our, you know, you know our, our, I suppose our genes are used to. And if we, if we remember that, it's not, it's not so abnormal to eat that food in the morning. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh, thanks for that reminder. Um, another question that was asked, uh, I asked the question was, why is raw oats better than cooked oats? Mm -hmm. Well, 
raw oats, um, first of all, oats are rich in vitamins. You know, you have your thiamine, you have your magnesium, phosphorus, zinc, manganese, selenium, and iron. And some of these uh, uh, things, when, they're, when you cook them, you lose the nutrients, especially the vitamins. So it's, you can cook oats. It's okay. You can cook it for a few minutes or you can add it. It's always better to add it in hot water or just soak it in cold water. That's more nutritious. You get all the nutrients because it's not destroyed by heat or it's not reduced by heat. But the choice is yours. If you cook it, you're not losing too much uh, vitamins. But sometimes we tend to advise what we nutritionists do. So that's why I said raw, raw oats. Yeah. And I hope that makes sense. Is this when people, if they soak it overnight? Is it that the overnight, the overnight oats I heard people talk about? Is that when they yeah. soak it? Yeah, if you, you soak it overnight, and then also when you soak it overnight, sometimes there's some, some, some fermentation that goes on, and this fermentation produces what you call probiotics, which are good for your gut. Mm. So it's a traditional a thing that was done you know, many, many years ago with our great grandparents. So it's actually very healthy to soak it overnight. Okay. Yes, okay. yeah. Thank, mm. you. Thank mm. you very much. Let me mm. see if there's any other questions. Um, Carrie, can I make a comment? Sorry. Yes. <coughs> Sorry about my cough. Um, so there, was, um, there was a documentary on BBC. I didn't watch the full documentary. I just saw an excerpt of it two days yeah. ago, or even yesterday, where a doctor was talking about ultra processed foods. I don't know if anyone saw that documentary. And the point he was making was that, you know, evidence has recent research shows that with all those ultra processed foods and when we talk about ultra processed foods it's all these sausages and you know the bacon and the ham so the evidence shows that the ingredients that are used are made such that they always want you to to eat more and more you know there's something that is done with the processing that just is marketing you know there are, there are these very intelligent people out there who are making sure that we, you know, they need to sell their products. So there are certain ingredients that if you are reading the food labels, you would not have an idea what these things are, but it's added to make you just want to eat more and more and more. I haven't watched the whole documentary, but this doctor went on just ultra processed foods for a month or so, and he could really tell the difference in his, you know, just the way he was functioning. You know, it was, I think it was some sort of a test that he was doing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. He was yeah. sleepy and tired and just realized that he went on and he was eating and eating and eating. So I like that when Alex said that, you know, the, the, the usual things that we know, all those, what we call the English breakfast and all those things that we always want to have, the bacon, the ham, those things shouldn't really be part of our meals at all. They, 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 they don't help us to just make, make us eat and eat and eat and then eventually lead to all sorts of um, unhealthy conditions for us. Okay, mm -hmm. so our yam, our plantain, our foods are fine, provided we add lots of vegetables to it, provided we are not cooking it for hours like we do. Mm -hmm. We'll be fine with our, our foods. Yeah, thank you for that, um, Hiba. Um, yeah, there's a documentary, I think it's, a, it's called a Super Size Me. I think if you've not watched it, watch it. And uh, it talks about this guy who goes on to a McDonald's diet and the sugar soda and for three, for I think like so many days. And it's, it, you actually experience exactly what happens, what happens to his blood tests and everything. And like Kiba says, yes, they actually, they, they, they research, they actually make sure that they put chemicals in these foods that make you addicted. If you don't eat it, you get a headache. And so you have to eat it. So, so when you eat something and you think like, oh, you don't have your coffee, you have a headache, we have a problem. It's not the food, it's not the coffee, we have a problem. So we have to also change our mindset. And remember, people are sick, people are sick. Don't just eat so that, don't just, I mean, you have to care about your body, you have to care about yourself. Show yourself some love, eat healthy, because if you don't eat healthy, in the long run, you are going to pay dearly you're going to pay dearly. So we want to avoid that. And that's why um, Khan is really, really trying so much to help all our African and Caribbean colleagues. Yeah. 
So thank you again, um, Alice. I've just got one more question here and somebody asked, can you soak the oats in cold milk overnight? Mm -hmm. Well, I've never tried to soak uh, uh, oats in cold milk overnight. Um, it'd probably just be the same because also if it is fresh milk, it means that the milk is also going to ferment if you leave it exposed overnight. And fermented milk is also very good for your gut. So why don't you try it and tell us about it next time? Thank you again. Mm -hmm. Now I'm gonna um, I'm gonna say thank you so much, both um, Iba and Alice, for you know a wonderful presentation and you know the conversations that you guys have is really you know informing us and enlightening us more and educating us so much about what we should we should you know we should be trying to eat and you know you're not telling us what to eat you're just giving us that information so we can make the right choices and I want everybody to make the right choice now and join and join Doretta in our half an hour um workout and uh Doretta I shall hand over straight to you thank you very much again thank you thank you thank you bye hi good evening everybody I um, hope you're all well. We're going to start with some fitness. So remember, guys, when you're eating your carbs and you're eating your calories, you know how much calories we can eat each day. You need to make sure that you burn those calories with exercise or moving, just keeping moving um, to burn the calories that you're eating so that it doesn't stay there and gain body weight and body fat if you don't want to. So you have to make sure that you exercise as well and keep active. Yeah, tonight we're going to be working with the bands again. So you're going to need your bands. Or you can have the loose band if you have the loose band like so. But these are the ones that you were given by Khan. So each week I'm going to just show you a couple of exercises with the bands that you received so that you can continue to use them. You're going to need your towel and you're going to need some water. <laughs> yeah. OK, so what I'm going to say is please, 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 please work at your pace. And remember, if you need to seek medical advice before you take part in the exercises, please do. Um, do watch and see what I do first before you start as well and just be careful just take it to the range of where you can move it to and work at your pace as well and just make sure you've got your water and your towel keep hydrated we don't want to dehydrate and let's get that body working we're going to start with a warm-up so if there's anybody that's got any injuries please be careful if you are if it's your first time joining the session again please be careful and take your time and join in and I hope you have fun. Okay, let's go. We're gonna start warming up. Let's stand up. Hmm. You see me? Good. Okay. On the spot, we're just gonna be running on the spot, just jogging on the spot, nice and light. You don't have to take your arms back because we're not sprinting, we're just jogging on the spot. So your arms are bouncing like so. Keep them at waist height, making sure you lift the feet off the floor. So we're lifting the feet off the floor like so. Good. And just lifting and just keep running. Go on the spot. You can go forward, you can go backwards, you can go sideways, whichever you want, so long as you keep moving. We're getting the heart rate going, we're getting that oxidated blood running through the bloodstream. So forward, backward, side to the side. Just keep running. Good. Well done. Keep running. On the spot, we're warming up. So just bouncing those arms and just bouncing by the side. Keep lifting those feet. Well done. Good. And we're going to slow it down and stop in five, four, three, two, one. Let's take the hands at the hips. Take the knees up and touch the hands, standing nice and tall. We're working the hips. Stay nice and tall as you lift. Lift those knees. Good. Now take the hands to the belly button and still those knees. Still touch your hands. Stay nice and tall. Good. Lifting up. Just keep lifting. 
Good. And now we're going to take our hands to our chest and let's lift. Lift those knees up, touching the elbow. We're not coming down towards it, but lifting those knees nice and high, touching the elbows, releasing any tension in the hips, flexibility. Good. Last four, three, two, one. March it out. We're going to take the hands to the chin. And again, we're going to take those knees up. Lift, 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 lift. Good. Take it up to the knees. If you can't go then, keep it here at the chest. But if you can take your hands to your chin, lift up. Nice and high. Four, three, two, one. Roll the shoulders back. Lift the shoulders, take it back, drop it down, forward, up. Go. Roll it back. And forward. Roll the shoulders forward. Lift the shoulders and really open the back as we come forward. Good. Big arm circles back. Stretch those arms back. Keep going. Straight, straight back. Straight back. Good. And now take them forward. Good. Forward. Nice and tall, nice and long. Pull the abs in. Keep the body tall. Remember, if you can't take your arms straight over, just put your hands in the shoulders and just do circles with the elbows. Next exercise, just part of the warm up is star jumps. I like to stand on my mat. So the width, the, the width of the mat, the length is here, going forward, and the width here, and jump wider than my mat. So let's go for 20 star jumps. Hands can be here, we'll take the hands up. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten more, ten, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, and relax, march it out, good, okay, get yourself a drink of water, we're going to start with the band, so you're going to get your bags first, put your hands through, palms facing, legs hip width apart, we're going to take the arms straight down and just pull the arms wider than the hips. As we do that pull, we're working the shoulder, we're working the chest. It's almost like doing the exercise in the gym where you lift up the arms like so. It's the same thing because we're taking the arms out, so you're working those same muscle areas. So let's do 10 of those. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Roll the shoulders back and breathe and let's take the hands out at chest height and we're going to pull again for 10. Palms facing. If you need to take the band in lower above your wrist, please feel free to and let's pull. Palms facing. Pull. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And relax. Roll the shoulders back. Always roll the shoulders back when you're doing these exercises and roll it forward just to release any tension. Good. Now we're taking the arms straight up. Again, palms facing. Lift the chest. Roll the shoulders back. Pull the abs in. Squeeze the bottom. So you're not here. You've squeezed your bottom forward. Nice and tight with those glutes. And let's pull for 10. One, two, three, four. Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Again, take those arms down, roll the shoulders back, roll it forward, and let's start from the beginning. At the bottom, let's start. Down by the hips, pull for ten. One, two, three, four, five, 
six, pull the abs in, seven, eight, nine, ten. Take it to the chest. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Take it straight up. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And down. Roll the shoulders back. We've got one more round, guys. One more round and roll the shoulders forward. If you need to twist out, just to release, just twist. Okay, let's start from the bottom again. Here we go, pull for 10. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Chest height, take it down if you need to, a bit, up, a bit higher than the wrist. And let's go, one, two, put it on the forearm, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And take those arms straight up. Last one of this round. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And relax. Take the arms down. Put the band down. Get yourself a drink. Good. You should feel it in your shoulders across your chest, across your back. Good. Okay. The first exercise that we're doing tonight, we're doing them in twos. So the first one is the squats and lunges. So we're going to take our legs wider than our mats and we're going to squat down and squeeze. Squat down and squeeze. Once we've done 10 of those, We'll then go on to 10 lunges, static lunges here, 10 on each leg. Then we'll go back into the 10 squats and then change legs into the 10 static standing lunges. Yep. Yeah. Make sure you can see my feet. I want to make sure you get that posture right. Good. Okay, let's start with the lunges. Legs wider than your mat, standing nice and tall. Don't stick your bottom out or bend forward, stand up tall. And as you sit down, then you push your bottom back, keeping the knees behind, and then stand and push the hips forward. So we're here. So we're not going like so. We're going like so. Hamstrings will go onto the floor. So your bottom pushes back. Your knees don't go forward. They stay behind your toes. Squat down, and then push up through the whole of your flat feet. Yep, so we're working the bottom, working the hamstrings. Let's go, 10 of those, off we go. One, push, two, push, three, push. Keep your chest up, four, five. Push the hips forward, six. Wherever you can go, however low you can go, eight, nine, last one. 10, march it out, shake the legs out. We're gonna do the lunges. So what you do here with the lunges, is you come to the end of your mat, put your feet, you tuck the end of the mat, take one leg back, so it look like so. Take it back, and then you'll drop down and push up. And as you push up, squeeze the thighs, Squeeze, squeeze the hips forward. So let's go for 10. Hands can either be on your hips or you can bicep curl and kick back, try some kickbacks. Okay, let's go. One, two, three, four, five, six, push, seven, eight, nine, ten. Stand tall, walk it out. Good. Back across the mat for the 10 squats. Okay, and let's squat down. One, squeeze. Two, squeeze. Three, squeeze. Four, squeeze. Five, squeeze. Six, come on. Seven, push up. Eight, pulling the abs. Squeeze the bottom, nine, 
Last one, 10. Back to the lunges. Toe at the end of the mat. Leg back, nice and wide, so that when you lunge down, you're not forward. We're here, pushing the hips forward as we lunge down. Let's go. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Last one. 10, and stand up, march it out. Feel free to get a drink of water if you need to. Now let's go for the squats again. The legs wide, and squat. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Last one, come on, 10. Well done. Good. March it out. Onto the other side of the squat. Toe at the end of the mat. Leg back. Whoops. Good. And let's go. One, two, three, four. Squeeze. Six, seven, eight, nine. Last one. Ten. March it out. Get yourself a quick drink if you need a drink, guys. Good. Quick drink. Next exercise is our press-ups and bicycles. Here's the press-ups. We're gonna go into plank, drop the knees, lift the feet, hands under the shoulders, we're gonna drop down and push up 10 times. Then we're going to go onto the back. And we're going to have the legs 90 degrees, elbows here. And as we bring in, we extend one leg and the other leg in and out 10 times. So press ups 10. Good. And bicycles 10. Okay, we ready? Extend, drop the knees, lift, and let's do 10. One, push, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Onto the back and relax. Legs nice degree, hands by the side of the ears and the head. And let's take the elbow to the left elbow to right knee. Pull the abs in, push the lower back into the mat and lift that shoulder, extend the leg. No, one, two, three, twist round, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Tuck those knees in, roll from side to side. Back to press ups, turn over on the front, plank full arm, drop the knees, lift the feet, hands under the shoulders, and let's drop. One, two, three, four, chest to floor, five, six, seven, eight, nine, last one, ten, and push. Sit back on those heels if you need to. Good. And then let's turn over 90 degree angle with those knees, hands by the side. And let's go. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Tuck those knees in and just roll from side to side. Well done. Last one, last one of the press ups, guys. Let's get my towel, my glasses are steaming up. <laughs> okay. Last one of the press ups. Plank, drop the knees, and 10. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Nine, come on, 10, and push. Sit back, well 
abdomen, strengthening the chest, the rib cage, the back, the shoulders, 90 degree angle, working the abs as we extend the leg. As we twist, we're working the obliques. Take the elbows right on the outside of the knees. Off we go. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And relax. Tuck those knees in. Roll from side to side. Well done. Good. Okay, standing back on your feet. Get yourself another drink. Good. Another drink. Well done. And we're back at the beginning again. This time we're just doing one of each. The squats, working the legs and the bottom, the lunges, working the hips at the front and the bottom and the hamstring. Yep, and then we're back on the floor for the last two. Okay, let's go. Legs wide, squat down, off we go. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Walk it out, get ready for the lunges. Toe at the end of the mat, on the leg extend back, and then drop down. One, two, squeeze, three, pull the abs in, five, six, pull it in, seven, eight, nine, last one, ten. March it out. Okay, get the legs across the mat. Let's go again. Well done. And drop. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Last one, ten. Marching out, take the feet to the end of the mat. Good. Take the leg back. And drop down. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. March it out, march it out. Get yourself another drink. March it out. Good. Well done. Back onto the floor, doing the press ups into plank. We're just doing one more of each of these ones, guys. Plank, drop the knees, and dip. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Last one, ten. And sit back on those heels, relax. Good. We've got one more exercise with the band on the floor when we finish this one. Tail onto the back. Legs up. 90 degrees. Lower back into the mat. Hands by the side. Extend. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Tuck those knees in. Good. And relax, just keep your knees tucked in, tip twist from side to side. And then we're going to get our band. We're going to place the band around the ankles. We're going to lie down, take the legs up, turn the feet towards the ceiling, hands at the side here, and we're going to take the legs out. So we're working the whole of the pendulum of our legs, the appendage, we're working the whole thing. So from the sides to the inside is where we're working. So let's do 20 of those, three sets. Off we go. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 
10 more, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, and relax, tuck those knees in, roll from side to side. Remember to turn your feet so that your feet, the sole of your feet place the face of the ceiling. Keep your legs nice and long. Turn the feet to the toes, toes point towards you. And as you take your legs out, don't let it collapse back in. You control the band movement. Okay, second set of 20. Feel it on your hips and the inside and the outside of your thighs. Pull the abs in, push your lower back into the mat. Let's go. One, two, three, four, five, six. Feel it here. Seven, eight, nine, ten more. Ten, nine, eight, seven. Come on. Six, five, four, three, two, one. And relax. Tuck those knees in. Roll from side to side. We've got one more, guys. One more. Almost there. One more. Okay, come on, let's go. Legs straight up, toes towards you. Lower back pushed into the mat, hands by the side, or you can have them here or out to the side. I like to have mine here. Let's take it out. You're going to feel it here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Come on, nine, ten, ten, nine, eight, seven. Six, five, four, three, two, one, and relax. Bring those knees in, roll from side to side. Now, as your knees are in, take the band off, place it to the side, and just rock from side to side. And then we're going to drop our knees to the left elbow, and then take our head looking to the right hand, and then we're going to take our feet and take them towards the hand. Still looking at the right hand, the feet are on the left hand, and just feel that stretch, keeping the back on the mat. Good, and just breathe. Breathe. Good. Bring those knees back in. Good. And drop the knees to the right elbow, look in the left direction of the hand, and then take the feet to the right hand, and keep that hand down nice and flat. Shoulders stay on the floor and just breathe into that stretch. Good. Well done. Breathe into that stretch. Feels so nice. And then come back with those knees on the back. Stretch the legs out in front, arms above your head, and just stretch, 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 and stretch. Well done, good. Tuck those knees in again. Grab hold of the big toes and lift up the legs nice and straight. And just lift your bottom up, massaging the back and lifting, lifting, lifting up nice and high. Just stretching out and releasing any tension. Good. Well done. Take the knees back down. Drop the feet and then come to a sitting position. Good. So we're here. Take the legs out nice and long. Take the arms up and really stretch up. And then we're just going to fold forward from here, from the hips. So push up, lift up. So hips first, then the belly button, then the bottom of the rib cage, then the chest, and then the forehead onto the knees. Rocking from side to side, wherever you can reach. Just stay here, if it's here, just rock from side to side. Good. Rocking from side to side and feeling that stretch. Well done. Come back up. And let's just roll the shoulders back. Roll the shoulders back. Good. And then roll the shoulders forward. Well done. And then let's just tap from side to side. Tap from side to side. Well done. And again, take the hands up. Stretch up. One more fall forward. Hips. Belly button. 
bottom of rib cage, chest, and then the forehead. And again, rock from side to side. Well done. And then walk back up. Good. And we're just going to sit here for the last two, two minutes, I think we've got. Let's just stretch out the inside. So feet together, hands by the side. And we're just going to drop one leg and bring it back up. Drop it as close to the floor as you can, opening up the hips, sitting nice and tall. So we're here. So just drop, then back, drop, and bring it back up, drop. Go with one more on each side. Well done. Okay, so we're here. We're going to take the feet wider than the mat and we're going to drop the knee in. Keep the body still, it's just the knee that drops. If you have to lift your bottom up, that's fine. But once you start to release those hip areas and your joints in that area, you'll be able to just sit tall and just drop it down because there's no tension in the hips. So the bottom stays on the floor. Let's just drop the knees in towards the floor if you can. Good, sitting nice and tall, releasing any tension. Well done, good. Now we're going to bring both the feet together like so. We're going to hold the feet together and then we're just going to flap the hips, the knees up and down like a butterfly, just flapping those knees, releasing any tension. Good. Well done. Keep going. Seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. And thank you very much. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. I think we're on time. Are we on time? Yes, we are. It's a little bit over, but we did good. Well done. Well done, everybody. Ah. And thank you. Directly. Hope you guys enjoyed that session. I am absolutely roasting. <laughs> thanks very thank you very much Doretta and thanks everybody for joining us you're welcome um, can I just remind everybody I've been posting in the chat box today um, the link to our uh, Healthy Hearts our Healthy Hearts um, survey which we'd love for you all to complete um, we're looking at how we can improve the service that we deliver and we really would love your feedback and your input I look forward um, to seeing you all again next week. And um, thank you very much for joining us. Remember to join us on Saturday morning for the health hour between 11 and 12. And I look forward to seeing you all next week, Tuesday. Take care, everybody. God bless. Bye-bye.